Radio Jungle. The Defining Audacity Radio Show and Podcast is on now. He's going in there and he is wiping your waffle cone on his butt. That's weird. Now you got angry blonde chick on your hands. Shauna and Drew are about to go wheels off while inspiring you to live a bold, adventurous, and intentional life. Here they are, in all their glory, Drew Myers and Shauna Glenn. I bet someone is about to say, let's ride. Howdy, howdy, let's ride. Let's ride indeed. Welcome to Wheels Off with (laughs) Drew and Shauna, formerly known as the Defining Audacity Radio Show and Podcast. It takes a global pandemic for you to change the name of the show. It really does. It's, yeah. I mean, you called me. You said, I just want to tell you something. First off, do you want to still do the show? Right. I, I had thought to know. maybe you were like found somebody else. So you told them, you're my plan B. Let me see if she still wants to do it. Keep your fingers crossed she doesn't. And I said, sure, I'll still do it. And you said, okay. And then you said, we're changing the name of the show. We're recording somewhere else. And that's pretty much it. Now, do you know why I called to ask if you still wanted to do the show? No. Because I hadn't heard from you since Obama was in office. <laughs> that is not true. I have been kind of busy. And we're going to talk about all your busyness. Yes. But I hadn't heard from you. I didn't know. What do you mean you hadn't heard I from thought me? You were, I thought you ghosted me. No, I did not. You did not. We recorded the show. We were trying to figure out how we could do it without being together. And that sucked, by you, the way. God, that sucked. You sent me this text message. You were like, "Shows over until no. further notice." <laughs> I never said that. Show the show has been canceled till further notice because I can't do it this GD way. I really couldn't. <laughs> I didn't talk like that, but I really couldn't do it like that anymore. I was losing my rabid mind. Yes, doing it via Zoom. Well, plus we were we were putting a lot of effort and a lot of funny into it and you were doing a lot of prep work and then the outcome was like shit you're right it was so i think you ghosted me i think we were on a break you know we weren't mad we were just on a break we didn't break up we were on a break we were on a break okay kind of like ross and rachel yeah but not because we were mad at each other we were just over it over trying to make this work in some sort of like i don't know it was like putting tape on something that was broken. Can I ask you a personal question? Yes. Did you do a show with somebody else while we were on a break? <laughs> I did not. Shauna, you can tell me right now and I won't get mad. Did you do the show with somebody else? I did not. Okay. I would get really jealous. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just randomly out there doing other podcasts? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Listen, if I ever do that, I'm going to make sure shit that it's not on the social media because you stalk me like there's no tomorrow. Um, so you would know immediately if I if I did that. Time it would out. be it would be deep, deep, deep undercover podcast Time recording. Out. I don't. Stalk and I'd have to like change my voice or something like this. <laughs> Hello, you're listening to the, the other podcast I do. Nobody tell Drew. <laughs> I'm cheating on Drew with this podcast. <laughs> Drew and, and I, I were on a break. I don't stalk you on social media. You post, post something and then two seconds later you're like. <laughs> <laughs> I turned into the teacher from Charlie Brown? <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So we are at the post office studio in Fort Worth, Texas. The new home of the Defining Audacity radio show and podcast. Super nice facilities. Super excited about this. We will be recording here once a week. Except that you just called it the Defining Audacity Radio Show and Podcast. That's going to take some time for me to get through that. Wheels off. And you didn't even connect with me and make sure that I was okay with wheels off. I knew you would be. And the logo. I like that. Oh, you do? It's a bear. I know. Where did you steal that from? That's not original art. That is stock art, which Uh I paid for. Okay. So I'm able to use it. Mm -hmm. And I chose a bear because of what it means. What does it mean? Oh, I'd have to look it up. (laughs) (laughs) I don't have that memorized yet. Mm. It's about strength and confidence, but also giving a shit about other people. Oh. That's kind of what this show is all about. I don't think it is. I don't really give a shit. Well, I do. I give enough shits. For both of us? To compensate for your lack of. I'm just thinking about food. Right now? Well, always. I'm just, in general, I'm always thinking about food. How has your lifestyle slash diet been in the coronavirus? Still, Still no meat. But have you been eating healthy or you just, I mean. Oh, no, 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 no. 
but I had a big talk with myself and I got up this morning and I ran four miles and I'm going to run every day. And I told Jeff not to buy me any more wine because I'm not going to drink Monday through Thursday. Shauna. What? I've lived through <laughs> this exact narrative with you before. And the running four miles a I know, day. It doesn't no stick. wine. No, it doesn't stick. I know. That's what makes me me. Okay. Say so you're going to do something and not follow through. I mean, I do it for a while. Hey, I've been doing this no meat thing since January. That is good. That's awesome. Yeah. But I mean, I've never said no to chips and salsa and queso no and meat, guacamole. No meat in those things. Yeah. All right. So let's finish up the new show. Okay. Wheels off. Drew and Shauna. We'll be doing it once a week now. Once a week only. We'll be doing some more video stuff on Instagram Live, on Facebook Live, some video stuff that we just post out there on social media. So in lieu of doing the show twice a week, three times a week, definitely five times a week, we'll be doing more video stuff. Maybe just go live for maybe 10, 10 15 minutes. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And that's and I think people will like that. Absolutely. Not do the whole show. Nobody's going to watch for 45 minutes. And that's how long the show is going to be. Okay, so we've got Wheels Off with Drew and Shauna. This is part of my flagship show, that's hard to say, that is called Defining Audacity. I have three shows that are funneling down into the Defining Audacity radio show and podcast. This show, we're starting a new series called Sixes, where we pick six people that we focus on. They have one thing that ties them all together, but we want to hear their individual stories. And the first one we're going to focus on are nurses and doctors that are on the front line of COVID. So it's more serious type stuff. That's good. Okay. And then the last part of it is we're turning up the knob again on singer-songwriters on the Texas music scene. Here at the post office studio, we will be bringing in singer-songwriters, hearing the story behind their music, and we call that The Road Less Travel. So each of these podcasts will be in its own silo, and then all will funnel down to defining audacity. That's awesome. Clear as mud. I totally understand that, but just bear with us. This show you'll be able to find on Defining Audacity for a couple weeks, and then we will move completely to Wheels Off on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spreaker. We'll, wow. We'll upload them on both I'm right glad now. I don't have to do all that. I know. I don't even know how to do all that. I'm trying to keep all of this straight in my head. Yeah? You're the person for this job. I don't know, Shauna. I'm kind of stressing out a little bit about it. Well, let's talk that through. Why are you stressing out? Well, because I, w- I want it to be good. I don't need it to be perfect, but I want it to be good in something else that's important to me is maximizing your time and then maximizing the time of these artists and all the people here at the post office studio. Mm -hmm. I don't want to waste anybody's time. So I want to come in, get set up, be clean. When you walk in, Mike's hot. You can sit down. Hey, welcome to Wheels Off with Drew and Shauna. Mm -hmm. So all of that's important to me. So keeping all of that straight is... Okay. Well... Daunting. Yes. Just make a list and check them off one at a time. It feels really good. Okay, Santa. I will. Check it twice. (laughs) just take a breath and everything's going to be okay. That's what I always tell people. Even if I think it's not going to be okay, I'm like, it's going to be okay. Even if you think it is bull. And then I go in the other room. I'm like, Oh my God, this is not okay. When is the last time you went into your room, Mm -hmm. closed the door and screamed into your pillow? (laughs) I haven't done that in years. Really? Really? Mm. Yeah. I'm thinking about doing that. Just screaming. Just one time. Just one time. Yeah. And see what happens. Is the outcome going to be different? I don't know. We'll have to see. You might feel good. What about some rage music? Do you ever turn that on in the car? No, that would drive me bananas. Okay. I don't like that kind of stuff. Okay. No, I turn it to Yacht Rock Radio on Sirius XM. And you turn it's it to what? Yacht Rock Radio. Yacht and it's, Rock Radio. It's all the songs like, Sailing takes me away to where I'm going. It's all the slower. I would murder someone. It's all the slower songs, you know? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So, I'm on edge, and I'm going to put on Billy Ocean. That's not Billy Ocean. I know it wasn't, but he would fall into that yes, Yacht Chalk yes, Radio. Yes, yes, What is it? Yacht Chalk? Yacht, yacht Rock Radio. Okay, Channel cool. 178 on Sirius XM Radio. Hey, you have a good Sirius. Thanks. Siri voice. Okay. On today's show, we've got a lot to talk about. It's going to be a full episode of Real Talk. Okay. We're going to talk about you moving. I think people like that the most. They like I, to be caught up. I think so. Mm-hmm. The three people that listen to the show that actually give a <laughs> shit about us. Yes. So we're going to hear your moving story. Mm-hmm. You have a new house. Yes. I have a personal family story I need to share and I need your advice on okay. that. And I'm then you're so going to talk about Riley's wedding. Okay. 
So a lot of real talk today on Wheels Off with Drew and Shauna. Yeah. Sound good? That sounds sounds great. Now, one thing that we are not changing on this radio show. Is what? You're going to say, let's ride at the end of our intro. So without further ado, it's been, I don't know, four weeks since we've done this. God, this is making me happy. Shauna Glenn, say it. Let's ride. Life is short. Give yourself permission to go wheels off. This is the Defining Audacity radio show and podcast with Shauna and Drew. Welcome back to Wheels Off with Drew and Shauna. We're at the Post Office Studio, Fort Worth, Texas. Our inaugural show yes. at the Post Office. Really appreciate Daniel, Brian, and Vince for allowing us to come in and do the show here. It gives us a comfortable space. This is like a real space. I even put on makeup for you. You did? Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Because I told you we were going to be taking some pictures today. Ugh, I know. Well, I'm still wearing my clothes from running this morning, so I'm dirty, but cute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shauna, we need to talk about your big move. Yes. God, thank God it's over. Since we came on the show mm-hmm. last, you've sold your house. Sold our house. You moved out of your house. Moved out of our house. Closed on another house. Closed on another house. And completely moved in and got everything put away in your new house. It's unbelievable. And you're forgetting a big thing also. We renovated. We had 12 days to renovate. Yes. We were able to, after we closed on our old house, we asked the new owners if we could lease back the house for 12 days for two reasons. Well, the main reason is what I told them. And that's because Riley, because their wedding, their big wedding was canceled due to the, you know, COVID-19. She still wanted to get married on that date. And so she said, can we get married in your backyard? And I'm like, okay, I have to ask the new owners. If, so they were very gracious and let us stay an extra 12 days. But that also allowed me to get into the new house without us having to live in the renovation. Strategic. Yes. We, um redid our master bathroom like we moved the shower and the tub we switched places we painted the whole inside we put new tile everywhere we got countertops backsplash new lighting I did it all in 12 days and I will tell you I don't know how I got all that done in 12 days because that shit doesn't normally go down like that I think where I got the leg up was Before we owned the house, I had my subs go over and meet me over there. Subcontractors, for those that aren't uh, down mm. with the lingo. Yeah, and I had them go over. And so I already had the tile ordered. I already had the countertops being worked. I already knew everything that was going into the house. So as soon as we took possession, we just started hammering away. So we didn't have to, and I didn't go through the, I didn't go get permits or anything. So. Oh, wow. (laughs) And we were in the middle of the coronavirus stuff. So those guys probably... Wanted. Maybe I had some jobs canceled, so that probably helped as well. Yes. I wasn't surprised that you were able to get everything done. I really wasn't. But I will say this. You were going through kind of the laundry list of things that you had done. Mm-hmm. You damn near gutted the house. Yeah, we did. Tell people what your real estate agent said about the house. <laughs> he said, I thought it was a teardown. Right. He said, no one else in Fort Worth had the vision for this house There's no one who could have pulled this off but you. And I was like, really? A teardown? I did not see it as a teardown at all. I saw it as this gem. I mean, we we pretty much stole the house. I mean, we got it so cheap because it needed some work and it definitely needs... For those of you who don't, you don't don't know the house I live in, but when you walk into it, you're on the second level. It's a split level because we live on this steep hill. It's a daylight basement. Is what so is. you have to, you have to have a deck on the outside or you'll just fall out of the house. So, but the deck has to be completely reworked, which that's phase two of our renovation because we need more money to do that. See, but what's so funny about that is we have phase two, phase three on my house, which mm-hmm. we've lived in for three years. <laughs> Those phases aren't done. You say phase two. That means next week. Phase two was happening in the next 30 days. Yes. See, yes. I know. Listen, no grass grows underneath my feet. I get shit done. That is true. Yes. Every time I drink out of my coffee mug that says get shit done from now on, I'm going to think of you. Yes. Because it's the truth. Yeah. I was highly impressed. I got a chance to see your place firsthand and it's unbelievable. It's really, really cool. It's funky. You've done a great job with just making it look like home. I know. And adding your own kind of flair to it yeah you did a nice job thank you you should go into um, interior design i should i'm thinking about a career change and maybe doing something like that 
I'm not qualified, though, so. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I feel sorry for your husband. Why? He is such a lucky man. To be married to someone like me? Are you kidding me? Why do you feel sorry for him? Because his house that he lived in on the west side of Fort Worth was beautiful and perfectly fine. And he has this little blonde firecracker that he falls asleep next to every single night saying, <laughs> let's move to this mid-century in the middle of Fort Worth and we're going to completely redo it. Yep. He's happy. He's happy. He loves the house. I asked him what's his favorite part. And he, he loves our little living room setup. He loves the back deck. It's so much because it's up in the trees. You know, the deck is kind of and there's trees all around. It's it's cooler and it's such a nice place to sit out and listen to music. And we're really enjoying it. We've been there a week and we're enjoying the heck out of it. So tell people what it's like to sit in your little living area. When you told me to sit, you said sit down right here. It's very cozy. It feels like a hug. You said it feels like a tree house, and I thought that was a good description. Oh, it is. that They call it the tree. It's known as the tree house because you do. You're all you see when you sit down are the trees around you. That's what I liked about the house. You were smack dab in the middle of Fort Worth, Texas, and you can't see a neighbor Mm -mm. below you, beside Mm -mm. you. You can't see them anywhere. Obviously, up the front, you can see your neighbor across the street, but sitting there on your tree house, Mm -hmm. the back of your house, it's really, really nice. Yeah. No, I I just, I still can't believe it's just how it all fell into place and how we even came upon the house because it wasn't on my radar because it's only a two bedroom house. So it wasn't coming up for me on on my filters on realtor.com, you know, and so, but my real estate guy, a a girl who works in his office, it was her aunt's house. And she was like, well, I have a listing, but, and I, and I looked at it and I was like, well, how come I'm not seeing this? Because this house is perfect. And she's like, well, it's only two bedrooms. So at first I said, well, I can't, I can't buy this two bedroom house because I have two kids still living at home. But Harley had just turned 18 and she's kind of making plans for the future. And I was like, well, I guess, I guess we can because she seems to be like one foot out the door. So <laughs> we bought it. And I said, Harley, until your plans, you know, come into fruition, you're going to have to <laughs> live at your dad's. She was like, what? And I said, sorry, we just bought a two bedroom house and we had to pick our favorite and it's congratulations ethan, ethan. <laughs> wow i totally didn't think about harley and all of this i know right she's easy to you f- made her homeless no she has a perfectly good home on the west side of fort worth also with her dad he they she went over there she took her ferret she was able to buy a ferret condo she's got this sweet setup for itsy bitsy her ferret and he bought her new furniture. They painted her room. He loved it that she was coming over there. So he pretty much, she got whatever she wanted. So okay, she does complain that he's annoying. And I said, well, that means he cares. So you're going to be fine. Shout out to Tommy. <laughs> On a scale of one to 10, how tired are you? I'm, I'm not tired. I'm really okay now. I was very, very tired last week. Like, so the, the day of the wedding was Saturday we moved on Sunday and Monday and I thought I was not going to be able to ever walk or get out of bed again. I was so tired, covered head to toe in bruises. Jeff and I were comparing bruises What? from lifting furniture and furniture hitting you in the arm. I mean, I'm still, I'm still recovering from bruises. Don't move correctly. You're that's not supposed to happen. Slow down, slow down. I don't have time to slow down anyway. Well, I do now, but no. And Jeff, he like knocked the shit out of his shin with the dolly and he got a goose egg. I promise you it was five inches in diameter and stuck out about three and a half inches. And um, so now his whole ankle and foot is just red and black from all the blood, you know, settling down in there. He, he probably broke something, but he just, you know, he just rallies. Mm-hmm. That's what I like about him. Well, when his wife looks at him and says, <laughs> suck it up, <laughs> what choice does he have? I told him we should probably go to the emergency room. And you said it just like that. That does not make him <laughs> want to go to the emergency room. That makes him want to suck it up. So he doesn't look like a big He wants pee. to sack up, doesn't he? Exactly. Yeah. Jeff, it, do you really need to go to the hospital or can you please lift this piano? <sighs> can you please help me hang these mirrors in the bathroom? <laughs> I think he was really glad to go to work today. I mean, he was like, I'm going to the office. I got office stuff to do. I'm like, well, uh, can you help me with a list of things to do when you get home? And he was like, uh, what's on the list? And I was like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll just make it out and email it to you. God, thank you, dear Lord, <laughs> that I'm not married to Shauna Glenn. <laughs> Amen. 
Oh, God. That would be your lucky fucking day to no, be married to me. No, it would not. Oh, my God, yes. You would be so lucky. <laughs> Just got real awkward. It did? <laughs> kind of. Oh. Why, why would I be lucky? We're like brother and sister. So, I mean, I talk to my brothers and tell them they'd be lucky to have a girl like me. Okay. Yeah, same thing. It's not awkward. Congratulations on your house. Thank you. I'm really happy. I really love it. People have said, oh my gosh, you know, aren't you going to miss your old house? And I haven't missed my old house, like one second. I loved that house, but I love this house too. So, so when are you they're moving? so different. When are you moving again? We are not moving again. You're going to die in that house? Yep. It's wow. perfect for us. That's kind of weird to say or to admit. Why? I mean, I'm not going to die in the house. No, no, no. But when you pass, mm -hmm. your stuff will be in that house. Yes. You're coming to the end. This is it. Stop. Don't say things like that. You're the one that said it. That's what I'm saying. I'll be there till the end. Wow. That's what I'm 50 years old. So I got 45 years left. I'm not Lucky. dying before I'm 95. You really think you're going to live in that house for 45 years? Yes. No, I should you be won't. so lucky. You're going to probably live in that house for 35 years, be in the nursing home for 10 after that. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to think which kid of mine has already claimed the house. I want this house when y'all when y'all die. Probably Harley. I think it was Harley. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was Harley. Gave away her room. All my kids have claimed several things of mine. You know. I get the cuckoo clock. I get your silverware. I get this house. This silverware? Mm-hmm. What is this, 1943? Well, actually, Drew, it's silverware that my grandfather bought my grandmother on their wedding day. Oh. It's, um, he had to borrow $65 from my aunt to buy, from, from my great aunt to buy my, Mimi her silverware. So she gave it to me. And so it's very, I'm sentimental about things like that. Things being passed down in families. So, yes. So every time you eat with it, do you think of that story or? I do. Just when guys give you a hard time about <laughs> passing down the silverware. What is this, 1947? I made you sound like Homer Simpson's dad. Cool. <laughs> the teacher from Peanuts and Homer Simpson's dad. I know. I, I really feel like doing voices today. I'm into voices, right? Well, we fired Crystal Lynn, but we can bring we her did? back. Why oh, did I did. We I did. I fired her. Why? You don't like her? Mm, was I, it getting, was it? Were people our, hating it? Our listeners didn't. They didn't like her? Uh, not really. Oh. Why do you listen to the listeners? What do they fucking know? Okay. No. We just lost two more. <laughs> Down to one. <laughs> Who is it? Your mom or my mom? My my, mom I don't think my mom my listens. My mom doesn't listen for sure. Nobody has time for that. You're listening to Wheels Off with Shauna and Drew. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're at the Post Office Studio, Fort Worth, Texas, the new home of the Defining Audacity radio show and podcast. We'll be right back. Drew and Shauna try to make everything awkward as fast as they can. This is the Defining Audacity radio show and podcast. Welcome back to Wheels Off. I'm Drew Myers. That's Shauna Glenn. We have a serious issue going down in my house. Okay. I'm about to have the most grown-up, most dad-in-training, most serious talk that I've ever had to have with one of my children. Uh oh. We have decided after consulting Eileen's teacher that we are going to hold her back next year. She I, will be repeating the first grade. Okay, I remember you having this same quandary. Um, Coming out of kindergarten. Yes. yes. Okay, and you guys decided to go ahead and move her up, so she didn't make it as much progress as you'd hoped. She had not, okay. and I think the homeschooling because of the coronavirus really helped open my eyes to it. Working with her every single day. Eile is wicked smart. Okay. But she has problems learning. And full transparency, Eile is on the spectrum of dyslexia. Mm -hmm. um, right before they shut everything down, she was supposed to get officially tested. They asked if we wanted to do it virtually. And I said, what are the pros and cons to that? And they said, it's not as accurate. And I said, I want to wait. Well, we never reopened. There was no right. official test for her dyslexia so they did a pre-screening on her said she showed some signs of being dyslexic but what i noticed was when she read she struggled but then also when she was doing math and other things it was trickling down to that she was mm -hmm. having trouble doing her math problems because she couldn't read mm -hmm. so her teacher shout out to miss anderson got on the phone with tanya and shared some information with her and this is what kind of pushed tanya over the edge okay because Tanya was against it. 
she thought it was really going to hurt Eileen socially. Mm-hmm. So she, that's why we moved her up to the first grade. I really fought tooth and nail to hold her back in kindergarten, give her every chance to be successful. And based on talking to Principal Morris and Ms. Hines, her kindergarten teacher and Tanya, we decided to go ahead and do it, see if she could rally. Obviously, she did not. But her teacher, Miss Anderson, her first grade teacher, told Tanya that some of the other little girls, um, I, you, some people would say bullying, some people would say picking on, mm-hmm. they would say things like, you can't read a chapter book, I can read a chapter book. Oh. And she saw the way that it impacted Eileen. Mm-hmm. I would see Eileen come home from school, not knowing that information. She would grab one of her brother's chapter books, no pictures, and she would sit on the couch and thumb through it. Okay. Knowing now that she couldn't read or understand what was going on Mm -hmm. in any shape, form, or fashion. But it was so important for her to do that. And that breaks my little heart to think about those little girls saying that to Mm -hmm. her and and how it must have made her feel. So we decided that if we hold her back, yes, it will. she'll be pissed. I, I mean, there's no two ways around it. When she sees Mia and Jill. You and think she Bella, will be mad? They're all her friends are moving up. Mm-hmm. Glen Rose is a small community. Yeah. All of her friends are going to be moving up and she's not. So I think she's going to be mad. I think she's going to be upset. I think she's going to be confused. But in the long run, it is going to be good for her. Yeah. Because as soon as she starts the first grade again, she's going to have this boost of confidence. Mm-hmm. Now, it's important to remind people that Eileen's birthday is late, late, late July. Yeah. July 26th. Mm-hmm. It's not like she was born in February. Mm-hmm. So she, I mean, if something would have happened and she wasn't born, a, you know, for another week, she would be in kindergarten anyway. Right. So that's that's kind of where we're at with that. I have some more information, but I'm, I'm terrified of having that conversation with her because I have to do it the right way. I mean, yeah. I can't kind of get it right i have to nail this Mm -hmm. as a dad so if you have any thoughts opinions advice (sighs) i'm going to start by talking to crash that's the first thing that i'm going to do because i need him to come in big brother and be completely supportive with her yeah because she looks up to him so much and he will be he'll be sweet and kind how would how does she fall in line as far as height with the other kids she's smaller okay so see, that always helps because children before, when they're young, like Eileen, they think if you're taller, you're older. Right. I mean, people ne- always um, n- never understood how I was older than my two brothers who are taller than me. So they have, there's, a, there's this whole connection with your height versus your age. So it helps that she's not five feet tall, you know, going oh, in, sure, you know, sure, the sure, tallest sure. one in the class. Because, you know, we did this, had this similar situation happen with Harley when she was little. You know, she, we moved her from Montessori to um, a, another school. And uh, Montessori teaches by um, phonics. And the school that she was going to taught by you know, learning sight words and uh, memorization. Um, and so when we moved her over in kindergarten at, at Christmas break, um, she didn't... I guess it was first first grade we were moving her over and she didn't she didn't know what the other kids knew so she was going to fall really behind and so they said we can't we don't think she can be in first grade we think she needs to redo kindergarten so I you know that I mean that was that gutted me it was like I was just going to make her feel so she had done one semester of first grade no I'm sorry she had done one semester of first grade yes at Montessori we moved her over at Christmas break and they were going to put her back into kindergarten they did put her back in kindergarten yikes so she did um yeah so they said we can't offer her a spot in first grade we can put her in kindergarten back in kindergarten so when I sat down that night to talk to her to say you know I messed up we shouldn't have moved you over now I should have waited maybe till third grade to move you over but here's where we are and she said so I said so you're a little behind she goes yeah I couldn't I could I didn't know the words they knew and um and so she said it's okay if you put me in kindergarten I'm short so oh. see that's that's where I'm getting that they think if you're if you're tall you're older if you're short you're you're younger sure. so I mean that will that might help a little bit but but also Eileen's been going to school with these kids she's known these kids for a long long time right right um, I think that she's gonna be I think she's gonna be a little bit embarrassed sure. naturally and I think she's gonna maybe hope 
feel like she's going to miss out on Bella's birthday party who are her friends you know are they still going to invite her to their parties or are they just going to invite kids who are in the gray you know like how is right. that I think she's going to think that's on important to reiterate that that's not going to happen yeah your friend they're your friends forever you know sure so this year Eileen was going to play t-ball again she had the opportunity to move up to coach pitch or she could stay in t-ball and because last year was her first year to play t-ball we decided to let her play t-ball again well, when they canceled the season, Eileen said, yes. And I said, oh, I thought you wanted to play baseball, t-ball. And she said, I did, but I didn't want to play with those babies. Because oh. we had one practice before they shut it down, and all the kids were just really immature. Well, Shauna, those are the kids she's, she's about to a... go to school with. Yeah. That concerns me a little bit, too. We got a call from one of her teachers during the coronavirus madness and said we got Eileen's this certain kind of test score mm-hmm. back. And she said she's off the chart. And this is for gifted and talented. So, Eileen's not stupid. No. Eileen has a high IQ. Mm-hmm. High social skills. Yeah. Just has trouble learning. So, that makes, that puts pressure on me or I'm putting pressure on myself to nail that conversation. Yeah. Because I, I, I don't want her to be embarrassed. Yes. I don't want her to yeah, be. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's not your call. You know what I mean? She might be anyway. But Okay. Uh, yes, you're right. But I don't want to say the wrong thing to make her feel embarrassed. Mm-hmm. I do not want to say the wrong thing to make her feel any more sad. Maybe put a spin on it like this. You know, um, h- hey, you know, you know, you, we've we've struggled. You're trying to read and, and I don't I want to take the pressure off of you. Like I can see you're really trying and you're concerned and it's just not clicking yet. And so we think you need a little extra time. And so we're going to do. We're going to do first grade again and just think you're going to be the smartest one in the room because you've already, you've already learned what they're learning. So you're going to be able to raise your hand and answer the question and everyone's going to know you're a genius. And, and, but on, on piggybacking on that, when the world opens back up and you're able to, um, get the kids together, what if you had like an ice cream Sunday, like ice cream making party and you invited some of the kids that she's going to be in class with over to your house and have this cool make your own Sunday kind of so they can start to know each other and be friends. And that way it's not so it feels normal and natural when she shows up in class with all of them. That's a good idea. May do that. We were at dinner the other night and this killed me. And I, I, I'm really surprised I haven't got emotional Mm -hmm. during this conversation because I am emotional about this. She said something to the extent of next year when I'm in the second grade and we had already made the decision and Mm. I I could just feel the color Mm -hmm. leaving Mm -hmm. my face. My heart just started to hurt because I knew what was coming. Yeah. So we're probably school gets out in two weeks, probably two weeks out from having that conversation because it was important to me to not say anything to her now. Mm -hmm. She's smart, but she isn't smart enough to be like, I'm mailing this in. (laughs) You're making me do the first grade again? Well, guess what? I'm not going to do anything yeah. right now. But I wanted to get all the way through the end of the year and and then let, let her know. So is that really the only thing she struggles with is reading? Yes. But like I said, there's a ripple effect to everything else. Oh, no, no. I get that. No, I was saying because her IQ was so high um, and she's, I was just wondering if it's, if it's not more like Asperger's instead of dyslexia. No, 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 okay. no, no, okay. no. She is hyper creative. Um, I don't know how that fits into all this, but Mm -hmm. she always wants to draw Mm -hmm. and she wants to paint and Mm -hmm. she wants, I mean, she wants to create. She got up this morning. She was making an art project. That's her, that's her thing. So again, I don't know how all that. And you know what? Artists don't need to read. They kind of do to get through school. (laughs) Kind of do. So I feel, I I feel bad for, but it's important to remind people this. My dad has dyslexia. Mm. Um, she has two cousins that are dyslexic. So there is family history there right. with it. The biggest thing Eileen has working against her is her brother. Everything that he does, he does extremely well at a very high level, and it comes very easy to him, whether it's playing baseball, school, mm-hmm. reading, whatever. So for her to try to keep up with Crash, it's like a full-time job. It is. So she's working just as hard as Crash is, if not harder than Crash, but she's not making the strides mm-hmm. that Crash is. So I'm hoping. Yeah that this will give her that kind of that confidence boost. But also aren't there, I mean, I have several friends who have children with dyslexia. Aren't there tools and 
uh, stuff you can put into place that helps with, I mean, absolutely. And I'm done when it comes to this. I, cause I don't, I haven't had to deal with it. I've had to deal with other things with my children, but not, not dyslexia. They, they gave us some of those tools, mm -hmm. but Tanya and I, we are not educators and we cannot wait for homeschooling to be over <laughs> to let the experts yeah. do their job because uh. we're not helping her. We have the tools and we go through it, but it's, she's not getting it from us. You want to answer the questions for her? Because she's not doing it fast enough? No, not necessarily, but we're not explaining it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, Do you lose your temper? I, do, I oh. don't. Tanya does. I really don't. <laughs> Shout out to Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> I lose my temper when I'm like, hey, we need to make sure we put the date at the top of the thing. Mm -hmm. And then she doesn't put the date at the top of the thing. So I remind her, hey, remember, put the date at the top of the thing. And then she still doesn't do it. That's what I get frustrated yes. with. It's not the learning part of it. Mm -hmm. I'll keep you posted for sure. Definitely. Two weeks out from the most important Ugh. conversation. I have butterflies in my stomach for you. Girl, I want to throw up. And you don't think you can tell her before? Just pull the bandaid off and just tell her. No. Okay. No. Again, I think it's going to take a sit-down conversation with Tanya and myself to get on the same page. I think it's going to take um, a conversation with Crash to make sure he comes in to be the hero. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I want to set it up. And um, also get Miss Anderson and everybody involved because I want them to be just as supportive. Oh, and, and they will be. So will she have the same homeroom teacher? Yes. And that's something that we decided. Normally they don't do that. They think it's better if she gets in a new environment. But Miss Anderson is switching classrooms and I think she's changing up her curriculum to a certain degree. So mm -hmm. it wouldn't be the exact same. Okay. And she knows the situation so she can Absolutely. give Eileen what she needs. Absolutely. Okay. Here's some good news. It's not the end of the world. No. And it's not something that's going to, she's going to die from. No. So, um, and when, as she, when she's an adult, she will have figured out a way to work around it. So it's kind of like kids who suck their thumb. You're not going to see a 35 year old person sucking their thumb. So don't, don't sweat it. Don't fret so much about it. You know what I mean? I, I mean, you unless you're into that, sucking your thumb as an adult. Shout out to my brother-in-law, Scott. Does he suck his no, thumb? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're listening to Wheels Off with Shauna and Drew, broadcasting from the post office studio in Fort Worth, Texas. We'll be right back. Are you ready to give the status quo the middle finger? Drew and Shauna are. This is a Defining Audacity radio show and podcast. That's going to do it for this episode of Wheels Off. Drew Meyer, Shauna Glenn. Again, we've rebranded the Defining Audacity radio show and podcast, mm -hmm. and we're calling it Wheels Off. This funnels down into the Defining Audacity radio show. Just <laughs> don't worry about just it. Just follow it's along. It's just a lot You'll of words up. coming out of his mouth, and you don't have to pay attention to any of this part. Just make sure if you listen to this podcast regularly, go find Wheels Off on Stitcher, Spreaker, iTunes, Google Play, and start following that. We will post them on both platforms or both accounts for a couple of weeks, and then we'll switch all the way over to Wheels Off. And I'm so glad I don't have to be in charge of any of that part of it. Nope, I she just, just show shows up, up. Button seat and microphone in hand and just blah, 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 blah. That's talk. exactly how it normally sounds. Yes. All right, let's talk about Riley's wedding. Okay. Congratulations to her and Brett. Thank you. That um, I saw some pictures. Oh, you showed me the video. Yes. Really special, really cute. Just talk through that. And again, for those that don't know, her wedding, her actual wedding, which was supposed to be held at the Fort Worth Zoo, or the reception was, was canceled because of COVID. Yes. So, you know, of course, they were really bummed out when the news came down that their wedding, their big day was going to be um, canceled. She still wanted to get married on the same date. So we decided to have a small, just parents and grandparents, in the uh, backyard at our old house. And um, so... The then it, then it comes out that we're moving like the same weekend. So I mean, I was very panicked, stressed out. Um, just wanted to make sure I could get it all done and, and not die from a heart attack or something, and keep my husband from dying from a heart attack from all this stuff. So he is older. I know. And so uh, the uh, Friday night before, um, I kept the twins because Presley and Riley and Harley and. Uh, they spent the night together at Presley's house, kind of their last night as sisters before Riley got married. And um, then the morning of, everyone came over, or, you know, not everyone, but the family, small family. How many people? Um, that morning was just, you know, Riley, my, my daughters and Ethan, and um, then um, my mom, 
Um, it, it wasn't very many of us. And so they just kind of hung out. My uh, A couple of my friends dropped off some brunch stuff so that we wouldn't have to worry about food. Shout out to Kristen and Ellen who were so awesome during the whole that whole day, just making sure everybody had everything that we needed and staying, you know, responsible enough to stay away. Um, and then... Um, we had to set up the tables and because uh, we were going to eat dinner after just the small, you know, just the family and set up the chairs. And my uh, stepdad put together a trellis um, that they were going to get married under, which took about three hours. It was like wow, a, shout mil- out to Dawn. a million pieces in a box. And it was super windy that day. And it actually fell over once and kind of broke apart and he had to do it again. He was <laughs> He was very patient and he was very gracious and helped us. But at the end, and then the uh, the wedding, the florist, she dropped off on the front porch uh, the bouquets and the flowers for the for the tables. Uh, and then a restaurant dropped off the the food for for after. So Ellen, Kristen, restaurant florist, they would all bring it to the front door, ring the doorbell, and then just leave. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You guys did the ultimate social distancing wedding. Yeah. Well, no, I think ultimate social distance wedding would have been Riley and Brett at the courthouse and everybody just um, watching on Zoom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And no, so, this is so much better. Yeah, this was better. And and it was and so we did have the photographer um, and the um, the videographer. And so they kind of stood out in the in the yard. And so it was outside. Um, Riley and Brett, some of their friends came and they stood outside the fence and watched Stood and, outside the fence. Yeah. And really? then they and then they left as soon as the wedding was over. Um, and, uh, and it, I think it was beautiful. It wasn't her dream wedding, but it was so, it was so wonderful. And the two of them together, they're such a cute couple. They're so cute. I mean, they've been together 11 years. Did you cry? I did. You did? You have a soul. I, Breaking news on wheels off. You have a soul. Oh my gosh. Yes, I cried because what made me cry was seeing Brett's reaction to us seeing her. Because he started crying, and I was like, oh, my God, this is precious. So, yeah, it was awesome. Best part? Best part. Um, I guess just seeing them do their vows. They wrote their own vows. And some of them were kind of funny, and then some of them were serious. Just seeing them exchange that and how much they love each other, it's so clear, like, just how much they love each other. I think it's cool that, and again, it wasn't her dream wedding. But she's going to remember that forever and ever and ever. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. the small, intimate, the, you know, people dropping stuff off on the, yeah. dropping stuff off on the front porch and having to haul ass <laughs> because of a, a pandemic. I mean, she's probably going to remember that a lot more than mm-hmm. a wedding day at this really big chapel and then going to the zoo. I don't know why I think that. Well, but spoiler alert on the second part is we are having a big reception still in October. Yeah. Am I invited? Yes. Am I really? Yes. Cool. You are. At the zoo, same band, same, you know, the florist, everything. That, they're not going to walk down the aisle again. And she didn't wear her uh, wedding dress, the one that sh- she had planned for the wedding. She's going to wear her wedding dress at the, at the re- I mean, at the reception in October. So uh, that'll be a fun party with her friends and stuff once this all passes. All right. I'm just thinking it's May now. What if she's with child? I I'm just, that, actually, that's a very real possibility. I know. I actually gave them some money, and the money, and it said, "This is to make me a baby." So okay, let's well, get on it. So part of that is going to pay for alterations <laughs> to that wedding dress. <laughs> Got it. I don't think they're. I, I think they're going to wait till after October. But I think they've been together long enough. It's time to have a child. Speaking of children, you know, I'm going to do a little follow up here on Jeff's daughter Lindsay, the one who hasn't. It's not speaking to us and hasn't. I know where this is going. Two years. Mm -hmm. She just had a baby. I saw that. She had a baby on May 5th and we've seen photos and it seems like the baby's healthy in their home and, um, but we don't, there's no, there's nothing in the future that says we're going to get meet our grandchild, but Jeff's been really sad. Thank goodness he's been super preoccupied with the move and, and everything. Um, because Man, you know how to distract somebody for yeah, sure. Yeah. Let's renovate a house, Jeff. Don't look over there. Look over here, you know, kind of thing. But he did. Um, so, you know, this last weekend was Mother's Day and he, I guess we were settling in Sunday night and he said, um, I hope Lindsay had a good Mother's Day. Oh, wow. I know. Oh. I said, yeah, me too. So um, we're all just super sad. We're so excited that baby's here. 
Um, she's as cute as she's beautiful. And I'm glad we've, get, got, we've gotten to see pictures and everything. But we're just heartbroken because, I mean, is she going to know us, her grandparents? And um, I just, how long, how long is she going to do this and not speak to us? Yeah, that's tough. When I saw it, because I follow Lindsay on social media, mm-hmm. I saw it in my heart immediately sank for Jeff. Yeah. And I even said something to Tanya about it. And I was like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. Jeff is a, I mean, he's a grandfather already, but Mm -hmm. he was a grandfather again. And and I didn't know the situation if they had been back in touch. No, Any communication. So now that makes it even sadder. Now I did um, get on her registry, baby registry. And I sent so much. I sent like almost, I bought almost everything off the registry. Wow. And sent to them. And it kind of worried me. I was, I was like, okay, how dug in are they on not speaking to us? Are they going to return all the stuff on my front porch? Like, F you, I don't need your stuff. But they did not. They accepted them. And, uh, of course, we didn't, we didn't hear from them. I didn't expect a thank you. I just wanted to make sure that they had what they needed for the baby. Um, and I, I saw she posted a photo of the nursery. And I saw... The a stuff. lot of the stuff that That's I good. bought in the background. So I know it's being used and I'm so glad and happy about that. And, you know, then we moved. So we used to live a mile and a half from them. Right. And now we're back in town. And, and Jeff said, well, now what if she wants us and we're not there anymore? I said, I promise you, she, she knows. Because we're still, you know, she hasn't unfriended us on Facebook or blocked us or anything like that. And I did send her a message on Facebook a couple of weeks ago and just said, hey, you know, we love you and miss you. I know we're not, you know, you're not speaking to us right now, but if you need anything, diapers, formula, food, anything, just send me a message and I'll, and I, I'll drop it off on your porch. So she, she didn't respond, but. I hate that for Jeff. I do too, because they're so close. Oh my gosh, best friends. So I don't know. It just, it's funny what, you know somebody and you're so close with them and they're, they're everything. And then they meet somebody and just the power that a person can have over another person to extract them from everything they know and everything they believe. When we were packing, um, Jeff was um, emptying one of his dressers and there was a, a note that Lindsay, a handwritten note, a letter that she had written him. Uh, I guess a, a couple of years ago and um, he, I found, you know, he was reading it and he was crying and he said, um, well, this will ruin a person's day. And he, he handed it to me and I read it and it was a real sweet letter that she wrote him about. She doesn't know what she would do without him that, he, she, that she's, mm. you know, he's her best friend. Da, 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 da. I, it was, it was like a birthday card and she was like, happy birthday. You know, I love you so much. But, and so anyway, he, I, I gave it back to him and he crumpled it up and put it in the trash. Oh, no. Yeah. He's like, I don't need this. Yeah. Yeah. So um, he thinks she's gone forever. I nah, don't. No. I don't either. I mean, forever is a long time. I don't think she's gone forever. No. But way to uh, end this inaugural episode <laughs> of Wheels Off with a Debbie Downer story. Well, you wanted real talk. That's, that's what's really, real. But that's what's really going on in our lives right now. You know, we've got all these little... You know, a wedding and a move and, you know, a granddaughter in Kansas City that we don't get to see very often who just turned two. And then we got a grandbaby just born last week that we might not see for a very long time. And so, yeah, so that's that's where we're at. But I'm adding Jeff to my prayer list. Okay, that would be nice. Okay. And I'm also going to add Lindsay to my prayer list. That would be really nice. Yeah. Yeah. I like praying for people that I don't really know. It's very, it's very powerful. It very, it really is. Thank you for tuning in to Wheels Off with Shauna and Drew. Really do appreciate it. Broadcasting from the post office studio, Fort Worth, Texas. Coming soon, video from the Whoa. post office. Yeah, Shauna, have a great day. You too, Drew. Make the important things important. I'm Drew Myers. I'm Shauna Glenn. See ya. Leave pants on fire. Bye. Bye. Leave. Leave. Oh, live pants on fire. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thank you for listening to the Defining Audacity Radio Show. We inspire people to throw a wrench in the status quo and put your goals, dreams, and aspirations in the spotlight. Are you living a bored, joyless, and uninspired life? We'll inspire you to live on purpose.